house this morning. Just want to bless his holy name. Just to tell him he's so holy. We honor you this morning, Father God. We magnify your name. We exalt you this morning. You are worthy of each and every mouth that is open this morning, Father God. And we have to be such and every one of us this morning. We ask for your holy presence to be felt. Father God, we lift up our pastor before you and just ask for his blessing, Father God. That you can pour into him, Father God. For he's worthy, we are all worthy of what you have to give to us, Father God, of the you for salvation. We just want to bless you your name this morning. No, he shall have his breath that he you, Father God. Bless your name. We bless your holy name. We worship you this morning. Yes, Lord. Boys, awesome, amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen.
all time. We pray application and we pray the appropriateness of the Spirit to all of the heroes and all of them. In the name of Jesus. Father, we are going to pray about healing may be necessary. That manifest right now, we bring you to us necessary. We ask that manifest right now, we will deliver us to the Lord. We will not be asked at him for answer to our supplication on behalf of the saints. We ask that all those things manifest right now in the orphan of our mind. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's um. I just want to look back at from verses 5 over here, right? Because I know you're in intimacy yet. After, I will be looking at Numbers 21. I will be talking to you about some happening in Southern Kings. And I will be telling you about that statement that Jesus Christ made in the book of John chapter 3. Right? Amen? Amen. So you ready for that? Everybody ready for that? <laughs> so from verse 5 here where it says, right? And you know I am King James here. So it says, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that what? What is supposed? Yeah, they suppose gain is godliness. They suppose gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. Don't keep company with anybody like that. Who is thinking in that kind of way? But godliness, I want to come everybody read this to me. I want all the women to start of any woman in one morning. We move it just like like Israel is coming through the wilderness. Real woman. Alright? Everybody ready to read this verse with me? Verse 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Let's do it again. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Some believe that gain is godliness. It's godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing, the writer says, into this world. And certainly we cannot what? So we see that it is godliness with contentment as great gain and not the gain. It's godliness because everything, the gain is godliness. You ain't even here with none of it. You all understand what the writer telling you? I just wonder if people really understand what I'm saying or what you are saying. They say some suppose that gain is godliness. Gain is godliness. That gain is godliness. That, that you have it, that you get it, that you, you increase it. Some people think that's godliness. Paul said, withdraw yourself from that kind of person. Who take care of that? Move away from that. That's not it. He says it's godliness with contentment. That is great gain. He said, because you ain't coming in here with nothing. And you're certainly ain't leaving here with nothing. So the gain we are taught was godliness. You're going to leave that behind. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? I'm not going to even know what we're doing with that many people. You know what you're going to know what we're doing with? The rewards. Amen. That just stop in the kingdom of God. Give yourself a round of applause in the second half. And the second half is here. The book of Revelation chapter 11, 18, the book of Revelation chapter 14, 13, is telling you that you going to be going before God to get these rewards where you stop here right now. Amen. Not the gain where you thought was God. Listen, not that, you know, because that's it right here, because in Canaan, he said, look, hear me say again? Look at verse 7. I want you to read this because I don't want to really feel like lying or anything like that. Look at verse 7. For we brought nothing. Read it now. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we cannot carry it as well. You hear what you now tell yourself there, right? Yes, uh, you, hear, you hear what you now tell yourself? Say, read it one more time. One more time. Love. Read it. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we cannot carry it as well. Certainly, you know. You ain't carrying it. Not now. And guess what? You're on your way out, eh? Who, who don't really? 
You're on your way out. So if you're on your way out and you can't carry your thing because what can you take to What is you really doing? What is you really thinking when you do so God to gain rewards? We really, we really believe. Do you really believe? Let me, let me ask that. Do you really believe? Yes. Oh, look at that silence there, man. Do you really believe? Yes. Amen. 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 And if you really believe, then you want to know that you can't be mocking God. God don't respect nobody. Amen. Right? So, listen, you know what happened? Again, ain't nobody dependent on anybody else for kingdom rewards. So, I don't really have to bother with what you're doing. But I can tell you that you better make sure I'm doing it. Because whether you're doing it or not, you ain't affecting mine. You get me? Oh, you understand what I'm saying? I just here to tell you, you to tell you what it is. I just here to tell you what it is. Hope and pray that you get it right and you start to realize that wait now, certainly I'm going to be getting out of here. I wonder if I can know that here with value and wood or I'll leave it that behind because all of us considered was carnal and flesh all the time and not studying what Jesus was saying in the book of, in the book of life, in the book. You see where I'm coming from? Amen. You understand what I'm telling you? God don't respect nobody. Don't respect nobody. Alright, so he says, and having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Let's be there with God. No, Jesus tell them something like that in Matthew. When he said to talk about Solomon and how he was that rain, like the ladies, look at the ladies of the field, they're even more pretty than Solomon was. Right? You see, and, and you're studying, you're studying money, and you're studying all the different kind of things. And Ray, when he said, everything, he said, worth more than that. It's worth more than that. So he tell them, he said, pursue what? Kingdom things, you know. He said, pursue the things of the kingdom and then I know I'm going and add on to you. you. You get that? You all understand that? Matthew 6, 33. You, you all understand that? Huh? Seek here yeah, first, see? And then what? God, you know, come on. Jesus said, let's go on. Over and over and over. We looking at the wrong things all the time. All the time. All the time. The recipe for you to have an awesome life you are just to see God first. You get it? You all understand it? This thing is you know, it's so simple, but yet still we manipulate it into pursuing all the wrong avenues, things, trying to find one thing. Happiness and what? Contentment. Why do you think they keep buying stuff? Why do you think? Why do you think they keep trying to get something else? Why do you think they keep looking at what somebody else has? What? <laughs> yeah, tell them. Somebody tell them. Not content. Not content. We're not content. You get me? We're not content. No, the scripture is not about you being poor because it promises us, it promises us blessings. It's about though you being content with what you have. You get me? You being content with what you have. The game you're supposed to be running on is kingdom game. You get me? That you are to run down. And God said, I'm going to take care of the rest. But we haven't run and we're running down the rest. You get right here this morning. You get me this morning. We running down the rest. So God said then, you ain't got me, you ain't need me. Because if you decide to do it for you, then what is your opinion there for? What are you for? He said, pursue me, I won't deal with everything else for you. So what we want? We want to do it ourselves or we want him to do it for us? We want him to do it for us. Amen. I need somebody again. He said verse 9, but they that will be rich fall into temptations and see a snare. And into many foolish and hurtful us. They fall into a trap. 
which John met in destruction and perdition. Wealth is something that can take you off track. You get me to believe in Christ? You understand? That's why sometimes God gives it, uh, he gives it, he gives it us in portions because we can't handle getting it all at once. You get what I'm saying? We ain't built to deal with it all at once because we go haywire. We go in haywire. We go in haywire. You drive in Corolla all the time, you go by range. You feel? All right? You was in, you toss it in the field, you look at here now, you're outside with Gucci. What's she? You're out there. We can't handle it. Right? And then the bad thing about it is that we just discard who put us and gave us everything in the first place. That is the problem. You understand what I'm saying? So it's not game that is big godliness, it is the contentment with the game. It's great godliness. Here we then. He says, for the love, read this first and repeat this then. Jesus Christ, I'm just asking you for mercy for everybody who here right now. Just mercy. That's all, that's all I could ask God for, for each and every one of us. Mercy. Mercy. You know, right here, getting the riches and the blessings that you're asking for. You hear me until the end of it? It ain't right here. Without the wisdom to handle it and to navigate it, without the godly wisdom and direction to navigate well and riches, you're going to make errors. You hear what I'm saying? Yes. Outside of Christ, well, is going to put you in trouble. I want you all to hear that because some money flowing in here. I tell you, and some money not started flowing in here. But outside of Christ, you're going to be making some errors. And hear what the Bible says. It says, for the love of the money, the love of money is the root of all evil. While some, which while some coveted after, you pursued it. You wanted that gain. You prayed for that money. You prayed for everything like that. You asking God for that, and you say, coveted it, you know. He said, while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith. So you're pursuing that, so you start to move away from Christ. You get what I'm saying? It's a dangerous thing. You know? Wealth is a dangerous, dangerous thing. Outside of Christ. You know? Outside of Christ. So he says now, and pierce themselves. I wonder if you've seen what this Bible means. And pierce themselves through with many sorrows. You, you understand what I mean? Things will not start to go back for you real quick. Real quick. We gotta, you know what we gotta do? We gotta get a survey kind of done. See when some people run into money and see how quick life does depart them. Yeah. How quick they does depart life. Or how quick they depart the feet. And run in the side again, pierced with sorrows. Things start to happen to you one day next. Things where you can't control. Things where you can't deal with. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. The situations, these situations real. And we think this going on cause you to be pierced with many souls. Who? Say it loud. You don't respect no one. Know what to do with it when you get it. Numbers 21. In the book of Numbers chapter 21, we see these Israelites children again, amen. You know they love the journey, right? Here was one thing about the Israelites. This is not the Israelites, isn't this? Anything they could make short, they could not let it out. They would make it, if they could have get to that door in less than a minute, they would climb over the chair, crawl under the next one, come back on this side here, pass around the stage, whatever they could do. I recognize, and the Bible said, whatever they could do to cause the journey to be longer, they just do it. They don't care. They don't like to they, they like to real hard. Real hard. 
So in the book of Numbers chapter 21, we see this king, right? What's the name of the king here? Yeah? Arad. The Canaanites. Arad here, these Israelites coming through and decided to give them trouble. He decided to give them real pressure. And they get pressure. Here the Bible says, and when the king arrived, the Canaanite was dwelt in the south hill to tell that Israel came by the way of the spies. Then he fought against Israel and took some of them prisoners. He even captured some of them. And Israel vowed a vow unto the Lord and said, If thou wilt indeed deliver this people into my hand, then I will utterly destroy their cities. So we have two things going on. We have them under pressure and being tormented and under real tribulation, they're beaten by Iran and his people. And we have them now going to God to try to come out of that situation. Right? So verse 3 says, And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Israel and delivered up the Canaanites, and they utterly destroyed them and their cities. And he called the name of the place for now. So God listened to them. And he come and destroy Aaron and the Canaanites and the cities. He take everything from them. Everything from them. And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to, the, to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? This is really not easy. So this is what one God, one Moses. So what did they take out of Egypt for me to come here and dead outside here in the wilderness? Right? Listen. Here we get right up on tent. For there is no bread. Neither is there any water. And our soul loaded this light bread. They hear the man away coming from the heaven for them every morning. That they're following them. <laughs> they want bread made with this. You understand what I'm saying? Because they find the heavenly bread to light. They say they hate the light bread. They don't want that light bread at all. Yeah, they're not easy. This is our people to learn from. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people and the pitty people and much people of Israel died. They died. God said that kill them all. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned. We realize we do some shepherds and talk some shepherds. For we have spoken against the Lord and against the Moses. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make me a fiery serpent of brass and set it upon a pole. No, no. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he look upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pool, and it came to pass that if a serpent had been any man, when he beheld a serpent of brass, he lived, the Bible says. Now, we see what takes place here, but in book of 2 Kings 18, now, they start to worship the snake on the pool. Eh? And we know what that signifies, right? You know, anytime you go to the drug, so you see a snake on the pool? Or you go to the hospital? Well, that's the same thing. That's where it comes from. Alright? This is where it comes from. So, they have to destroy it in the book of Kings. But they started worshiping, they started building sex, they started printing for uh, not one of the worst. Now I'll share something. God delivered them from the most dangerous situation on the earth. You hear? The Canaanites and King Aaron. God delivered them from the most dangerous situation that they had. But you see, when you don't appreciate when God do something and you're not contented, you just start to make errors. The most dangerous situation that we all could have fallen into was burning in hell in an everlasting fire. 
God don't deliver you from that already and you're still contented. Amen. You still don't know what to give God praise for. Amen. So you're still looking for all kinds of things to fix some goals that God doesn't he don't fix the biggest problem you have, man. I wonder if you have anyone say yes, yes. The biggest problem you could have ever had as a human being is going to hell. God fix that for you. God, so we just like Israel. We ain't no different Israel. We ain't learned nothing new. Over these thousands of years. You hear what I'm saying? That as soon as God done fix the issue for them, as soon as God done fix the issue for them, they start to say, well, we bring me out here for to eat bread from heaven. That like bread, we don't want that. We want food from Egypt because you love the bondage you wasn't only time. You love to, you want to fight it for yourself. So you lack of content is what you might have said, God is really content. It's content. Men are going to talk to you about this. I want to hear your life is that telling you about I want to start to realize what I'm going to tell you about. Because I've got to realize that a lot of us in content with nothing that we have. Although the biggest problem that we got don't fix, we still in content and gain God praise. We can't play this still. Every single day. I want to change your mind today. Amen. Understand what happened, the biggest problem you ever had, God done the event. So what are you worry about now? We are worry about now. You want know If you don't get this right, tell you right, you ain't going to survive. Amen. What coming? Amen. Amen. You ain't going to survive. If you get what I tell you here today right, God is going to start to point to your basket soon. You, you want to understand what I tell you? Because it's only now you realize what this wealth and contentment really is about. Other than that, you don't know that you don't understand this thing. You ain't ready for it. You ain't ready for money. You ain't ready for healing. Because God takes care of the biggest sin in your life and you're still complaining. Give him praise. Just for seeing him. But you still get manipulated by little carnal things. Come on, believers in Christ Jesus. Come on. So then, if you can't get that right, then I can't really bless you. I can't really point to your circumstances. Because every time I point to your circumstances, you're still thinking you need something else. You get what I'm saying? So you can't handle it. You're not ready for wealth until you understand that the greatest situation in your life, he done deal with it already. Because here is simple to see in the story. You're going and die. I rather them riding for your heart. You're going in the enemy land. They're not women. Israel walking together. You hear? They're not women. And there is this king who say, them ain't coming to get. And you know, he just said he started in the middle. He just said, you know, he kills some and takes some prisoners. It's better you die than be a prisoner of war. You know what I'm saying? Don't get captured by the enemy at all. Don't let the enemy captivate you in none of these little stupid things that are going on outside here. You know what I'm saying? That you start to watch the little porn, or you start to listen to the little stupid music. You know what I'm saying? Don't let the enemy Get to in that area ready and keep your prisoner. Yeah. All you get near this morning, I want you to break out of that. I want you to break out of that. So you're not dangerous, you're just dancing you know? Because I rather them come and they ain't, they ain't care about who they say Israel who. Back one Red Sea. <laughs> what? Feed from one heaven. I never get in true with me. The enemy is like that. He's feeling just, you know, he's coming to try to get to you there. You know, in that prison. You get me? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you're realizing in this room, 
We realize we're in bondage. Here what happened. I realize that too much on social media. I realize that too much on the porn. I realize that drinking too much rum. And so much things is having in bondage. I realize I'm spending too much on my credit card. I realize all these things are having in bondage. I realize it. So here what we're going to God. And God say, we're well, going and I'm going to destroy the enemy for you here today. In the name of Jesus. Where God was going on. I'm going to break the free from it. I'm going to damage it. I'm going to mash it up. In the name of Jesus. He's going to do it. Because these are people like that. When you go to him, you have an answer. You got an answer? The answer, you know. So, so the Bible said, he destroyed them, you know. And when he not destroy them, the Bible said, he destroyed the cities after to them. So we don't leave nothing. We don't take no prisoners. We don't destroy everything when we deal with it. That's the God of the soul. You hear what I'm saying? Yes. So you what? The Bible said, when that done, they didn't like the way. God was carrying them. You hear me? After God fixed your biggest situation, you don't like the way. Yeah. How are you carrying them? You can hear me a bit? Yeah. I wonder if you can hear me. After you fix the biggest situation you have, you don't like the way you carry them. You understand what I said? So you're complaining. And you say, well, you say, when you say, Lord, I was enjoying the same day, 40 times. You bring me out here now, and tell them come to church to drink communion and crackers on a Sunday morning. Eh? On Sunday morning, can I be doubles and rum? You hear what I'm saying? Some kind of foolish thing you could have been doing home. TV, cock up my foot and my toe with him so. <laughs> oh, they are in the air conditioning. I come out of my bedroom and I take breakfast about to them. You take note that that could tell me to come here yeah. with the same sentence on a Sunday morning to listen to the word and to take communion. That will be the I ain't come there. I ain't here. I ain't like that at all. We just meet a lot of situations in life that is fit this scenario. After God take care of the whole big situation for us, you know you have some, when you have some hidden Kellogg's, the big tiger on the box, and you tell you one by sunshine, everybody come here. But you don't like the way you go doing things. Because sometimes we are that dark now. So I tell you, we got some other situations now that we adapted to. We adapted to a lot of other situations. Don't move on and complain. Because God got to care of you. You know what I'm telling you? Because we got to start to adapt. You gotta stand at that. And I'll tell you something here too. Parents need to be trained. Not the children, the parents. Because some parents say like, I can't stop my child from eating so that they are you mad? So we have a we ain't training any kids no more. We're gonna train the parents here. It's all you have to do it. You hear what I'm saying? Yes. And they had to understand the way. And not no man complain. But when you don't do it, you raising up an ex Israel generation coming in the back day. Yes. And God will deal with it. Because they're not content. You can teach them what contentment is about. One telling you you're eating that and you going to buy something for him to eat different. Let me put that. Yeah. Let me put that. You know what making that man? When you give God thanks and praise for that, that comes from heaven. But you only want to feed them the carnal thing. You only want to feed them the carnal thing because you're not teaching them that some godliness with content is great gain. So it's the parents we are the children. We can teach the children because the parents who are the loaded fools. Is the parents, is the parents, is the parents, is the parents. Let me tell you something, God is not going to hold no child responsible. He said, as arrows in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children of one's youth. You have the obligation to take them and to aim and shoot them in the direction that they want to go. So if you understand contentment this morning, start to teach it to your children. Start to teach 
listen to your children. Because you ain't even realizing that their little children put you in a bondage. They put, imagine little children putting you in a bondage. Eh? And telling you what to get for them. Yeah. Who really robbed them? Who really dragged in this guy? <laughs> Who did that to this tree? Yeah. Imagine them telling you what to buy. Yeah. They're telling you when they're going to eat and what they're going to eat. They, what? What's the name? The real generation in here. You can have a real generation in here. That could happen in your time? No. When they cook bhaji and bowl, you have to eat bhaji and bowl. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You don't know about ice cream every day? You don't know about KFC every day? You don't know about chicken on Sundays? Juice once a day? Tea in the afternoon? All the things that you are not for me. Because you are not to be one. You want to be one. That them telling you what they want. And you are just in a certain time in your life here right now. You you know you want you want them just you, they will steer you all to madness if you all don't get this right here today. You, you, I want to be here, I want to be here, I want to be here. I want to be here, I want to be here, I want to be here, I want to be here. I feel so. But this is what we like to tell you, you know. What we like to say. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way the way God was tiring them. <laughs> that they sat to complain. This is madness. Godliness with contentment. It's a great game. You remember what, you remember what Paul told me Timothy? He said, and they will be pierced with many sorrows because they're not content. They will be pierced. You know, you know what? You all understand the word pierced. Pierced means that it is going to hurt when it happens. I want to feel. What are you What is that? What's PS? What's PS? I don't show you PS. I don't have to 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 show you PS. PS. You say it. To PS you. You know Jesus was PS? Yes. To PS you. Pain has to be inflicted. You hear me anymore? Yes. He's going to inflict many sorrows. So he's going to come in all different ways. All different directions. You could break sin my God sent for you. Because it's here. You can't break none of that, you know. You can't break a thing. You can't break a second. You can't break up. Nothing, 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 nothing. Not. So God said, imagine. God said, all right. Well, you know, look like my friend. <laughs> Take snake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah? yeah. Me yeah. like my friend. Yeah. Take snake. I sent them so best for them. Fight them and kill them. You remember when Jesus said, tell them, he said, which father, if a son asked him for a bread, give it to my son. <laughs> Yep, you ever see scripture talking to scripture? Yeah? You have to be misbehaving. You got yeah, you have to be misbehaving. That you get in bread and you complain, take snake. Take snake in your table. So anybody, you might have say that when they start out, get snake so snake in place. You know what I'm saying? Snake in place. When you raise up, you break bowl, snake. You go into bed, snake. You're in the kitchen, snake. You go in the movie and tie around and go to snake. Everywhere you go is snake. Snake, 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 and snake only dinner with it. You know what that? That's painful situations in here. It's the same thing when Paul tells them and Timothy's way up. But it is, it is figuratively snakes. So he said fiery silver sun. So hear them now. Hear this Israel. You realize we said something wrong, Lord. <laughs> this Saturday. 
he realized we say something wrong. Go on. And we realized we back to Moses too long. We sorry for that. Because, you see, there was a thing you want to tell me about that. You just know we are doing wrong all the time. Yes. Don't make it look like you yes. So don't wait till God starts to send all these little troubles in your life to start to acknowledge him and stop doing the foolishness that you're doing. You get me? You get me? Don't wait till I'm going to sleep, tell him, Papa. Watch him. You're going down the road. Boop, 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 boop. Stay. Shut up, shut up, please. You live on good. You live on good, 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 good. You go down the road and you go on to buy some, put in your car, boom, decline. Sleep. 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 You understand what I'm telling you? You, you think everything going good, boom, school call and you're trying to get your sleep. 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 Don't sleep again. Sleep. Sleep, 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 sleep. Bam! Pull something out of Warren, you didn't pay some ticket. Somebody go pay your deal there. Snake. Snake. So snake. Snake. So all that thing is in your bam, bam, bam. Yeah, yeah. For you to realize what you're going to make that mistake. I wasn't content because you're not going to do the biggest thing for me in my life already. And I ain't been really crazy this way. I'm complaining. I'm complaining. I'm complaining. I ain't, I ain't content at all. Yeah. Eh? Yep. Yeah. What about my generation? Shall we go? Yeah. 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 Well, listen, listen, so they complain, Moses going to God again, begging to them, right to beg for you. That is our intercessor. No matter what you're doing, you understand what I'm saying, bro? No matter what you do, I'm going to beg for you. I'm going to ask God to fix the problem here. You hear what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? That is an intercessor. No matter what you do, you buy some poses, you make your brother make a gold and cast him and tell you you're not beating him, let him make that gold. You see Moses there again. Please show me that see if we have to give it to you. That is his way. His way to make a gold and cup. You could imagine, this is a terrible people here. Then ends here. Moses up on the mountain talking to God. And then just did it right now when it's wrong, it's very cool in the first. Yeah. Make that call quick, you know, because they want to, they want to, they want to worship an idol. So they make it quick. Boy, you know, when Moses sees the one, but so why they were going to beat me? <laughs> me built for that kind of thing. You understand what I'm saying? So, God answers the prayers. So God tells Moses, you say, Moses, Get a rod and put that snake on the road. That whoever come and watch it when they get back, going to live. So Moses made the snake with silver and a brass silver and in Bible for it. A brazen silver and Moses made a, a brass silver and he put it on the pole in the camp of Israel. So when a trouble bite you, when a snake bite you, the guy is stand up before the pole, so. <laughs> and you're going to go from that. You're going to go from that. But it's about, it's about a word in the same thing. Let me say, let me say, let me say. And the Lord said, we'll make it fire, so we'll set it up on the pole, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he look up on it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it up on the pole, and it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld a serpent of brass, that man lived. That man lived. How much times a serpent, right? Go by to you if you know it has something that will make it. Only once. You realize that time making no sense. That's what sin is to you when Jesus Christ is coming for you. You know what I mean? It don't make no sense no more. Because you think God sin got no effect on you. Yeah. You feel what I'm coming from? You sin that could have taken you down, ain't got no effect on you. Because you are that brave serpent. You know Jesus is a brave serpent? You know it? Look at John chapter 3, verse 14. John 3, verse 14. Jesus still talking to the man called Nicodemus. 
He said to our man, call me Nicodemus. Right? And John 3, John 3, 14, John 3, 14, right? He says to the man called Nicodemus, and he says this. Everybody there? Yeah. Let, let's take it from verse 11, right? Let's take it from verse 11. He said, Very, very, I said that we speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you the three things and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you heavenly things? If I tell you that a man died, listen to me, a man died, gave himself to you to live because he was the son of God and he rose again after three days. If I tell you that and you don't believe that because that earthly, that happened, how am I going to explain to you the things of the kingdom and the dynamics that's taking place out there? And you can't get a little piece of can out there. You get me? He said, so he talked about the So then he says, and no man had ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the son of man is in heaven. So he tell them it's only me. Go in and out. You, you get that? He said, only the son of man do that to me. Only me. And then look at verse 14. He said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. Give God praise. Just give him praise. Just give him praise. I want him to get up. I want him to get up. Jesus tell him that he said, just as Moses lifted up that serpent in the wilderness, the soul is a man to be lifted up for you to live Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And then when we look down, the most famous verse in the whole book, John 3 16. But look at where it comes from. If you ain't get this, you can't understand that. So here it says, verse 14, he says, so lift it up. Then he says that whosoever be what? In him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and that whosoever. I want to start a release on tail. I want wealth, riches, everything that brings in prosperity, fruitfulness to be released on tail in the name of Jesus. Amen. But you couldn't receive it and you can't deal with it unless you get what I'm telling you here this morning. Godliness with contentment is great gain. You just have to take a break for what this son do on the cross. That's it. And everything has dealt with. That's it. That's it. Listen, I know things going on. You ain't got to tell me things going on. I know things going on. God, I'm tell me things going on. Eh? Show me things going on. Why do you think I know so much to tell you? You think I just guessed this all? You think this morning I guessed this all? Last week I guessed it. I, I was going to tell some of this. I had this ready weeks now. But today is the day that I have to tell you. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. Because you have to listen to me. The air is just an air and it's under two thirds the Bible says. You have to be taught how to manage things properly. You get me here? You get me here? Yeah. Because it ain't nothing for God to make a man rich. That means that's something small for God to do. You think that's a big thing? It ain't nothing for God to do that. But it's what that man going to do with it when he gets rich. So to save you from being pierced with many sorrows, he pulled it back for your own good. But when you understand what to do, and you understand the dynamics of the kingdom, then he said, you know what? I could let loose something. Amen? Amen? And amen. Because we're not going to let loose something. We're not going to let loose something too. Yeah. Because imagine he 
you say, you know what? You might be ready now to handle something for you. Amen. You get me? Amen. Because it takes you through a period. You think if God didn't want to get me rich, you can get me rich, 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 just like that? You wouldn't. But remember the quiver? Is that a key period until you're ready to be fired? Beloved believers in Christ Jesus, God getting ready to fire you in the direction that the doctor is. But I have to prepare you first. I can't just shoot you outside there and you ain't prepared for what it is coming. Because these things ain't learned, it's not easy to navigate well. You hear me? And we don't want to err. So I don't make sure I'm telling you today. Because as I said, some hands going to let loose on some hands in here. Going to let loose on some hands in here. I'll show you for this, I won't put it there. Going to let loose on some hands in here. Remember when, when I'm going to give this one Miranda to do the same, she said, there's a river. And when she said the river, she started to bring a river for you. A miracle, she said, floating. Yeah? She said the waters are troubling. The waters are troubling. You know when the waters are troubling? Are you know that? We're healing you. The water is troubling. You know, who gets into the pool when we walk? The Bible says it's not a pool that an angel used to come and do the water. So shh. Okay. And when the water shake up, they say whoever gets in there, get healed. Amen? Yeah. So that's what she tell you. She said the water is troubling. You know. The water is troubling. You know. All you have someone telling you. Know. Yes. What's the angel? The angel doesn't swim. What's the right now? You're swirling in the water. Right now, the water moving around you. Yeah. Because it's once a year, the Bible said the angel has come and shake it up once a year. Today is yours. Today. Get it right. 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 Because he, listen, I'm telling you. That he releasing him. Yes. He releasing him. He releasing him. Amen? Yes. He releasing him. I receive. I'm telling you, he releasing him. He releasing him. So get ready. 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 Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And you know, let us close with this here. Because I wonder if people really understood this here now. So here, here we are with this thing about this. Is, is it the serpent? Is it the serpent that was on the pool that did what it had to do for Israel? No, no. You know what it was? It was faith. Give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. It's faith. It's faith. That's why when Jesus tells the believers, he said, for whoever believes. You understand me? Listen to me. Christ is your brazen silver. And he has done the greatest thing for you. And he has released into this atmosphere today all blessings, favors, truthfulness, and mercies in his almighty name. The only potentate thing of King and Lord of Lords and with him is Jesus. Amen. Yes. I pray that God bless you on this way and that you are able to manage every asset that is calling to your circumstance in Jesus' name. Forget murmuring and complaining. God is going to take care of every single thing that you need. Amen. Amen. Amen.